Hello and welcome to this video on masks in Lightroom. There's a lot to talk about here because the addition of AI subject recognition and masking tools has opened up a whole lot of new possibilities. In this video though, I want to take a look at one thing in particular, how you can combine masks in Lightroom and how regular and AI masking tools can work together for better results. So I do have one problem with Lightroom's AI masking. Sometimes it can work really well, such as when you're selecting a subject against a background. In this underexposed idle portrait, for example, I can just add a new AI subject mask and Lightroom will automatically generate a very good mask for my adjustments. I didn't even need to drill down into the people masking options for this shot. These masking tools create a pretty hard edged mask, which is fine in situations like these. But they're not so good if you want to select and enhance a sky, which is something I do a lot. Because if you just use an AI sky mask, clever as it is, it will sometimes leave a pretty obvious edge at the horizon. Not only that, if you do darken the sky, then I think it looks a lot more natural if it has a gradation in tone, so that it's lighter towards the horizon. But you won't get that with an AI sky mask. If you do want more of a gradation in tone, then a regular linear gradient mask would seem to be the answer. But then you've got the problem that taller objects in the scene that jut up into the sky will get darkened too. So the solution is to use both at the same time and this is how it's done. It doesn't matter which way around you do this whether you start with the sky mask or the linear mask but I'm going to start with the sky mask. This is my new sky mask. It's so easy to create with just one click of a button and Lightroom always seems to do a great job. But if I make some adjustments, adding a bit of dehaze, for example, which is very good for bringing out drama in skies, and by tweaking the curve a little bit to add a darkening effect, my sky looks a little overdone in the lower parts of the frame. And there are some nasty cyan tones creeping in as well. The mask is fine, but this adjustment doesn't look right when applied evenly across the whole sky. So what I can do now is click the three dot icon alongside my sky mask and choose the intersect mask with option and then choose the linear gradient option in the sub menu. With that selected, I can now drag out a new linear mask from the top of the picture and where previously it would have masked the top of the building too, now it intersects with the existing sky mask and the building is protected from the adjustment. This works brilliantly. If I click the show overlay button, I can see how the gradient and the sky mask have combined. Best of all, although they are now intersected, they are both still active and editable. You can view both intersected masks in the masks panel and switch their visibility on and off to see their effect. The one I most likely don't want to change here is the linear gradient mask, as I experiment with different positions to get the gradation I want. And here's a tip, if you have the mask tool selected but you don't see edit pins for selecting each mask, check the bottom status bar. You need to make sure that show pins is selected. Now that's it for this video. There's a lot more to Lightroom masking than this of course, but I hope you find this quick mask intersection tip useful for your landscape and outdoor shots. So thanks for watching and see you next time.